All right, I want to thank everybody for joining us on Facebook this evening. We're not going to get uh, too detailed. Again, there are still more questions and answers at the moment. It's still very much a wait and see with Delta as we probably say that just about every tropical system, but really until this gets into the Gulf of Mexico, we won't know at least with a little bit more certainty what the storm is going to do up to landfall because there's still the question of how does that remnant circulation from gamma affected? What does the land do when it moves over the northern Yucatan? And also will that forward speed at 17 miles an hour continue? All questions that need to be answered before we can have a far better idea of where that landfall is. As I mentioned, this is the new seven o'clock information. Winds have been found to only be at only still at 145 miles an hour. Motion forward motion has not changed and the pressure has actually been holding steady for the better part of the day. Intense storms and we actually really saw what looked to be more of an eye structure. But what's very interesting is that the hurricane hunters are finding that the eye is very, very small, about a five or six nautical mile wide eye. So it is a very tiny and fairly compact storm, which means they can rapidly intensify like we've seen, but they can also rapidly weaken. We'll see. Now again, it is going to be interacting with land, but if we're basing this on history of storms that have moved through the Gulf and the Caribbean, or I should say the Caribbean, and interacted with land and even interacted with more mountainous islands, it really hasn't done much. So I'm thinking that we're not going to see a whole lot of disruption as it moves over relatively flat plains of the Yucatan. Again, landfall later in the night, uh, tonight going into early tomorrow morning, emerging into the Gulf by tomorrow afternoon, weakening to a three, then re-strengthening to a four before weakening a bit into the northern Gulf before making a landfall somewhere from Texas or South Louisiana. Big question is where exactly? And again, we're not really going to know for certain until it gets into the Gulf. We see if that forward speed continues and then maybe a better idea of where that northerly turn may occur because here's what's going on right now. You can kind of see in the water vapor there is a big upper high right here. Also some drier air. It'd be nice if some of that drier air was able to move in. Also, I want you to note some drier air that is sitting over Texas and Mexico. That may come into play a little bit later on into the forecast. Right now, though, as that high is pushing the storm over very warm water, there isn't at the moment anything to hinder further development. Warm surface temperatures, but also deep warm water. This graphic is called the oceanic heat content. It basically shows us where we're looking at not only the surface temperatures, but how far down below the surface that warm water is. And this is very deep warm water. It's shallow warm water across the Gulf. Again, I'll switch back over. The temperatures across the central and southern Gulf are in the low 80s, and that is supportive of a tropical system. But when you go down, that water suddenly and quickly cools off. Now, it is a little bit warmer. We don't have exact temperatures with these type of graphics, but it is a little bit warmer or maybe that depth of the water is a little bit warmer as you get into the western Gulf and the storm is going to be moving over that area. But again, you also find some shallow warm water in the northern Gulf and along the northern Gulf Coast, water temperatures are in the 70s. That is not conducive for a tropical system. Now, it's possible that the storm moves so fast that that cooler water eh, doesn't really have enough time to affect the uh, energy of the storm and affect the circulation. Something else, though, that's positive with that fast motion is that as the storm continues, continues over the Yucatan and into the Gulf. When does it make that turn? How far west and northwest does Delta go before a turn toward the north? That's going to be key to the forecast. And it's possible that the storm moves so fast, it moves far enough west that by the time this upper trough starts picking up the storm, it's getting picked up more over Texas. And that is still, as I mentioned, very much a possibility. Also, I'd mentioned that drier air over Texas and Mexico. That is with that upper trough going to start getting fed into the storm as it starts to get a little bit closer to the coast. So how does that cooler water interact? How does the dry air interact with the structure of the storm before landfall? All questions that sometimes models will not get right 
most of the time. Uh, these are just some subtleties that computer models just don't have a great grasp of. Now again, there is really not much, uh, there is some consensus, I should say. There is not perfect consensus with the models. The Euro having been trending a little bit more towards southwestern Louisiana. The GFS has been sticking to its guns and saying central Louisiana. We will wait and see if there is some model consensus. Now this model suite, and the several models that we, or several models that we use, and this is also kind of the same suite that the Hurricane Center uses and making their track. So if you look at this model consensus, you basically have an idea of where the Hurricane Center is going to be placing their track. We'll see as we get new runs in if these start shifting a little bit more to the west or maybe they hold steady and continue to say South Central Louisiana. We will see. Again, there are still more questions and answers and in terms of any uh, specific values for impacts in terms of wind speed potential, storm surge numbers. We're not going to get those numbers from the Weather Service until maybe tomorrow, and also rainfall totals. We just don't know. So we're kind of looking at more of a broad brush of what we can expect. Coastal flooding, certainly, and storm surge. Winds will be increasing maybe late Thursday, more likely into Friday and Saturday. Kind of mentioning that because we will start to feel the winds picking up later on Thursday. We'll have some periods of heavy rainfall at times. At times, you you might get some heavy downpours. I don't think this is going to be a widespread flooding issue, but certainly some banding rain could see some localized flooding. But really, it's not going to be a big rain event as the storm should be moving very quick. It's going to be more than anything a wind event and also the risk as the storm moves inland. We will see that threat of tornadoes Friday and on into Saturday. So right now, really nothing new with the storm. And again, more questions and answers at this time until we see the storm emerge off the Yucatan and get into the Gulf by tomorrow. Then we'll have a better idea of that forward speed. If that speed continues, actually for us, we would like to see it going as fast as possible. Not only the fact that it would move inland and move out of here fast. Again, a faster motion toward the west. It may be so far to the west that by the time the upper trough gets here, it'll be turning northward well into Texas. And again, we don't wish this on anyone, but we need to look out for our neighbors and friends in southeast Louisiana and southern Mississippi. Again, the trend has been more west. It does not look like we're going to see any trend eastward, if anything, more and more west. We will wait and see what the new track says coming up tonight at 10. And of course, we'll have far better information once the storm actually emerges into the southern Gulf by tomorrow afternoon. So stay with us on Facebook, YouTube. I guess we do some YouTube stuff, Instagram, Twitter, and all of that stuff. We'll have more information, detailed information, as well as on Eyewitness News coming up tonight at 10. For now,